Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. I decided to roll into part three because there's just a lot of news. It says here, Eurozone unemployment hits record high and reveals two-speed Europe. The unemployment has hit a record high, revealing further evidence of a two-speed Europe as increasing numbers of young people in Spain, Greece, and Italy desperately seek work while Germany's jobless rate continues to fall. Then the dollar falls most since 2011 as central banks bump up stimulus. God, I'm so sick of that word. I, I, like It's inevitable stimulus. Stimulus forever, right? There should be a new campaign of the Federal Reserve. I bet Ben Bernanke, who has his 30-year mortgage and his little Ford Focus, as he says, um, I bet he has a little bumper sticker. Stimulus forever. It's like a little campaign for the Fed. You know, do you have people that are like, Ed and the Fed, and Ben Bernanke has a little, his own little grassroots campaign, quote, grassroots campaign to stim stimulus forever. Because, you know, that's that's what they're there to do. They're there to be parasites, and they're there to um, have you pay interest so that you can use your money. To issue debts to the sellouts, your politicians, your representatives in Washington, um, where the interest will be paid off, not by you, but by your children and your grandchildren. Yeah, and of course, what, the European Central Bank President Mario Draghi said... He would do whatever it takes to save the euro. we got to save the euro, right? Even if it means that your future, well, you won't have a future, right? Just got to save the euro. Well, it's good for money, just like every other central bank. It's good for money. Like I said, the two sides of the coin, capitalist communists, you're going to have central banks. So, same thing. Federal Reserve sends thank you letters to Congress for letting them destroy our economy in secret. The Fed continues to pump up this bubble economy by printing more money and by setting interest rates artificially low. It says here, and the U.S. Congress continues to stand aside, allowing them to systematically destroy our economy. It says the U.S. Congress could choose to end this madness at any time, but the truth is, is that they won't even pass a law that will allow American people to see what is going on over at the Federal Reserve. It was Politico that first broke the story about the thank you letters that the Federal Reserve Ben Bernanke sent to five Congress members in July. Bernanke acknowledged in the letters that there was never any worry that the audit the Fed bill would actually get through Congress and be signed into law, but he was still extremely grateful that a number of members of Congress got up and publicly denounced the bill. So this is what he said, while the outcome of the vote was not in doubt, your willingness to stand up for independence of the Federal Reserve is greatly appreciated. So fuck the independence of the U.S. Uh, citizen. Uh, it, it, the vote was never in doubt. In other words... You're just a bunch of nobodies, right? <laughs> you don't live in a democracy or, or, or anything of the sort. So, But consumer spending has risen, so everybody celebrate. Consumer spending's risen, but it's because gas is up, which means people might have to cut back elsewhere soon. Americans boosted spending in August even though their income barely grew, but much of the increase went to pay for higher gas prices a sign that may have to cut back elsewhere in coming months. I just covered about how people were spending less on food, uh, going out, dining, entertainment, so they can support their cell phone habit, right? Their fix and their cell phones. Meanwhile, the average price of the U.S. gas was about 380 this week, a record high for this time of year. 55% of small businesses um, or business owners would not start a company today and blame Obama. There's far too much uncertainty, too many burdensome regulations, and too few policymakers willing to put aside their egos and fulfill their responsibilities to the American people, said the president of the National Association of Manufacturers. Said 55% of small business owners and manufacturers uh, would not have started their business in today's economy, according to a new poll. Also reports 69% say that o Obama's regulatory policies have hurt their businesses. Then married households compromise less than half of the U.S. population. So we're not just dying off physically um, as far as, uh, you know, obese, obesity and, and health-wise and stuff like that from the eugenics. But um, socially, we're dying. Uh, people aren't getting married and people aren't having kids because they can or they chose not to because they can't afford it. Married couple families with children, once the predominant household structure, now are even outnumbered by one-person households, says the study. The study further noted that American women are now having fewer children, 1.9 children per woman. Walmart workers are telling Wall Street about hard work and low pay. They say that the world's largest retailers' labor practices are unfair and voice their concerns to Wall Street analysts on Monday, claiming that problems like long lines and empty shelves are systematic. 
The meeting brought the employees' complaints to an audience that is typically more concerned with Walmart's bottom line, trying to convince analysts that issues such as low levels of staffing can lead to poor customer service, therefore impact sales and profits. Yeah, I never understood that. It's not like these people are getting paid that much. You know they're making a fucking killing over there at, at Wally World. I, I mean, they're dying. And remember, just in Chile, they're the, they, they're the th what, what was it, three years or something like that? They dominated the market. But you go there... I haven't been there in a while, but you go there and what? They'll have like a hundred different lines and like they'll have like three or four of them open. They said one example is when Walmart threw out 2,000 pounds of leftover Halloween candy this summer after it had been too short staffed to stock them on time. Management tried to sell the expired candy and discount bins and then threw it out after it did not sell. They've also cut employees' hours and cut the labor costs to the point where it's actually harming not just the workers, but affects operations day-to-day -day of the store and also affects customers. One 24-year uh, employee from Walmart in Wisconsin said workers' hours are being cut at her store with positions either going unfilled or being filled by managers. And lastly, there's simply not enough manpower in the store to fulfill these tasks, she said, adding that some workers are being asked to run power equipment without proper training or certification. So... Do more with less, right? That's their motto. Uh, it's talking about uh, uh, human resources, uh, people, slaves. U.S. households face tax increase from 2013. Tax Policy Center says U.S. households are facing an average tax increase of $3,446 2013 if Congress does not avert the so-called fiscal cliff. The top 1% of households face some of the largest tax increases in 2013 and would see their after-tax incomes fall by 10.5% if Congress does nothing. That would translate to an average tax increase of $120,000 for that group. So we're talking about, remember, this is most likely going to be just your average millionaire, not your billionaire, not your trillionaire that doesn't pay any taxes and, and hides in offshore accounts. These are the people that create jobs. Yeah, so before you get all giddy about, uh, you know, uh, the redistribution of wealth, which Obama said back uh, back in the day, he admitted just recently, I reported on that, that that's what he's all about. It's not towards giving it from the uh, giving it from the rich to the poor. It's the giving it to the middle class and the upper middle class to the rich corporations so they can fund research, development, set up corporations offshore and throw a few handouts to the poor. But remember, where does your 53% of your tax dollars actually go? Well, go check out this video. It goes to the military. That's right. 70 federal agencies owe 14 million in unpaid taxes, but names of agencies have been censored. Individual Americans and businesses are the only ones who owe the government back taxes. So do 70 federal agencies, but don't ask which ones because the IRS watchdog won't say. So they're not for um, exempting taxes like income more says more than 90 percent of the delinquent taxes are owed are unemployment taxes which include monies withheld from employees wages that are required to be remitted to the irs on the employee's behalf these taxes are necessary to support federal programs like social security and medicare then microsoft and hewlett packard use offshore units to avoid paying taxes so the u.s panel says microsoft and hp avoid billions of dollars of u.s taxes by shifting their profits offshore so besides killing people uh people like microsoft and bill gates where does this where does this money go towards well eugenics foundations the bill and melinda gates mount uh, foundation and killing people right depopulating as the UN and genetically modified uh, flies and stuff like that and food, promoting that. As the UN opens its General Assembly session, it's already thinking up new global taxes. A 1% tax on billionaires around the world, so it's not 10%, and maybe it's just to, to kill some of those pesky uh, c competitors of the trillionaires. A tax on all currency trading in the U.S. dollar, the euro, Japanese yen, and British pound sterling. Another tiny tax on all financial transactions, real free market, including stock and bond trading and trading in financial derivatives. New taxes on carbon emissions and on airline tickets, as if it's not bad already on all of these things, right? Right? It says uh, royalty on undersea mineral resources extracted more than 100 miles offshore. And, of course, what? You will help subsidize to these big companies like British Petroleum and Royal Dutch Shell. You'll subsidize that. If not, you'll just see it in higher prices. EU telcos defend UN Internet takeover plans. So a group of European telcos are defending a controversial proposal to radically alter the architecture of the web and its governance. 
A trade association of 41 European telephone companies responded last week to mounting concerns over the proposal to turn Internet traffic management over to the International Telecommunications Union, a regulatory body of the United Nations. So there you go. Mexican theme park is giving a legal border crossing experience without the danger from September 10th. This is how long I've been waiting to cover this guy. A coyote in a ski mask barks orders. We have to cross. We'll go in groups of three. So they go down a desert road. Sirens begin to blare, and they veer off the road and down a rocky hill. There's a shout of, this is immigration. Oh, you know, what is it? Uh, La migra, or whatever. Agents tackle a man to the ground. The others hide in the shadows. They found him, a boy says. Immigration. So there is a participation in a seven-point mile trek through the desert with a fake border patrol agents in pursuit and pay $18 for the experience. Alberto, Mexico, sits about 700 miles from the U.S. border. Illegal immigration turned into what one resident called a ghost town, but now, ironically, a simulation of the clandestine border crossing experience has revitalized it. So if my, if my memory serves correctly, I think in Detroit they were going to open a zombie theme park to boost the economy. The hike is to help people get a taste of what it's like to cross into the U.S. illegally. What we try to do here is raise consciousness about the suffering of the people who are crossing the border illegally. An imaginary line, of course, right? So as a, as a, um, as a person who promotes a stateless society, i.e. no government, I think uh, Im imaginary lines are getting shot over it is completely ridiculous. But if you're going to play statism and nationalism, you know, uh, you, you're going to, you know, pay into the system and have certain things, you need to secure it. But this is happening everywhere, especially in Europe and Scandinavia. This is being done uh, on purpose, not just for low wages, like cheap labor, like in, uh, in Europe and Scandinavia with the, you know, Arabs and stuff like that immigrating like Mexicans in, in the United States. It's to also um, basically create this multiculturalism, which is to kill the culture that already existed there. Kind of like what the U.S. and the Europeans did to the indigenous when they came. But the difference was is they didn't want uh, slave labor. They wanted the whole land, and uh, they just started killing mofos. Now, the lesbianic woman, Napolitano, is back saying gay couples to get relief from deportation. The ICE agents will consider same-sex couples a family. She wrote yesterday, couples in long-term relationships will be less likely to get deported from the U.S., Obama regime has already said as much. Homeland Security solidified its message that uh, this is a huge step forward. So it's an LGBT advocate. And in the UK, and you know in the US, uh, they monitor every single email, text message, phone conversation. Napolitano admits she doesn't use email at all. I refuse to say what she did use. But witnesses contradict Border Patrol's account of fatal sh Authorities said a plainclothes agent shot a 32-year-old woman after she rammed him with her car Friday while he was serving a warrant. He said that uh, he was carried several hundred yards before he discharged his weapon through the windshield of the vehicle. He said that it was it literally ran our agent down. The witnesses' accounts Saturday portray the woman as driving away from the agent, saying he was walking towards the car and the car was moving back slowly. Nearby residents said he pulled his arm up and I heard it, pop, pop, pop. Without her even able to say a word, I didn't hear anything. He just came across and just shot at the windshield many times. Uh, one uh, witness said she saw the agent walking towards the front of the car, shooting about 12 times without identifying himself as, be as being part of the border con patrol. Uh, then it says, whoever shot my wife, guess this is the husband, that guy, whoever that is, that guy needs to get shot, he told ABC News. New details emerge on how the United States government armed Mexican drug cartels. It says here, indirectly, the U.S. government played a role in the massacre above by supplying some of the firearms used by cartel murderers. Three of the high-caliber weapons were linked to a gun-tracing operation by the Bureau of basically the ATF, whose Operation Fast and Furious allowed almost 2,000 guns to walk out of the United States and eventually lost the weapons, ended up in the hands of Mexican hitmen. Have U.S. officials agreed to clean routes for Mexican drugs entering America? Well, the Sonola drug cartel member says he has evidence that it will show that the cartel, the most powerful organization in Mexico, were given immunity from prosecution by the U.S. government 
And in return, the Sinola has been providing U.S. officials with intelligence on lesser drug cartels or competition so they could be taken down. Which I've been saying for since I started GGN, the Mexican government is pretty much the cartels. Mexico detains 35 officers linked to the Zetas drug cartel. And Russia is going to arm Nicaragua's war on drugs. Since Russia is no stranger to the global war on drugs, they're currently working with NATO. But they just want control over the opium and the cocaine. It's consolidation. But Latin American leaders are questioning the war on drugs. So they can have a state monopoly. Thank you.